welcome back to the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. This is episode 25. My name is Candice and I am your host. Over there is Yoshi. I can't point. Well, that took that that was a failure. Anyway, as I was saying, over there is Yoshi and he is the feathery co-host. Um this is Episode 25, I think I said that already. Today is Tuesday, October the 25th. Last time I recorded, it was October the 1st, so it really has been a while. I want to thank all new and returning viewers to the podcast. Thank you so much for choosing to spend a little bit of your time with me. I know that there's a ton of knitting podcasts out there, and I really appreciate each and every one of you either coming back or deciding to give me a shot. This is a knitting and generally yarny goodness podcast. Um, it has been a good three weeks since I have spoken to you all. Um, and quite a fair bit has happened. So October the 19th was my birthday. I turned the ripe old age of 32. I just wanted to thank everyone who left me lovely Instagram comments and Ravelry messages wishing me a happy birthday. I super appreciated it and it was super lovely to read those messages. So thank you all so much for those. Actual day of my birthday was relatively quiet. I worked, we celebrated at work with, you know, the general office cake and goodies and my, my, my work bestie Carol took me to lunch. That was super awesome, but most of my celebrating I had done the weekend preceding my birthday because uh, that weekend of the 15th and the 16th was the Fiber Shindig, which was on the Saturday the 15th, which is a little crafty, it's like a little fiber market fair that happens twice a year here in Calgary, and then on the 16th, well, it was happening all weekend, but on the 16th, I went to the Calgary Tattoo Convention where I got myself another tattoo, which I'm super happy with. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw a photo of it. And I got to hang out with Laura of the Fawn Knits and her husband, Michael, and her sister, Natalie, which was really awesome. I got to see Jenny of Lone Larch at the Fiber Shindig for a little bit. Um, I feel like just as I was getting there, she was leaving. So Jenny, we do have to hang out sometime. I got to meet, well, I've already met her, but I got to speak with uh, Jess of Haven Fiber Arts and Karina, who is Nitty Pie and just all sorts of lovely people. And so that was an awesome weekend. And that was sort of how I kind of celebrated my birthday. As you will see in my acquisitions, I kind of went crazy and I bought a lot of yarn. <laughs> anyway, I totally meant to record on Saturday, like the Saturday that just passed, but I don't know what happened to me. Aaron took me out for my birthday dinner on uh, Friday night and I basically felt like crap after. I don't think it was food poisoning, honestly, because Aaron was fine and the food was delicious. We went out for Mexican. It was amazing. I would go back to that restaurant. I just think that my stomach cannot handle alcohol because we took a cab there so that I could drink because generally I don't drink and I did on Friday night and then like I didn't even drink enough to get drunk. I wasn't even tipsy. It's just I think my stomach hates alcohol and I felt like complete crap. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I did not record on Saturday like I had planned to, but thank you again for everyone's uh, lovely well wishes and get well messages. That was super appreciated, but I'm feeling tons better today. So yeah, alcohol and me are not friends, which really kind of sucks because sometimes I really do want to have a margarita once in a while, but... This isn't the first time this has happened, and I'm just starting to suspect that I have some sort of alcohol intolerance, but... Anyway, I don't have a lot of time to record. Um, I just really wanted to get an episode out there because it feels like it has been far too long. So I got home from work 
Uh, and I'm sitting here and I'm just jabbering away. I'm not really talking about knitting. So let's get on to some of the knitting content. I think we're good to go now. <laughs> so can you tell it's been a while? Yeah, it's it's been a while. So first things first is I have a knit along coming up. Um, coming up pretty quickly here because it's starting on November the 1st. So I am co-hosting a knit along with uh, Robin and Mary who host the Cherry Pearls podcast. Hi ladies. Um, we are hosting a Socks in Space Cow. I will put the hashtag here. <laughs> so um, Socks in Space Cow. So it starts on November the 1st and it's going until the end of December. So December 31st. Not December the 30th, like I said in my last episode, because there are 31 days in December. Not 30. Anyway, the rules are simple. Um, they have to be socks, hence the name Socks in Space. But, you know, kid socks, ankle socks, slippers, as long as they encompass your feet, they will count. Um, and they have to be space related in either pattern or yarn colorway names. So... Um, they have to be named after stars, galaxies, planets, or they can be space related, um, based on a spacey fandom. So like Star Wars, Star Trek, Firefly, Sailor Moon, Doctor Who, um, Mass Effect, which is a favorite of mine. <laughs> um, but yeah, they just have to be space related in either yarn or pattern. Um, whips will count as long as you were not 50% done, um, before the start of the knit along. So as long as you weren't even done one sock, basically, uh, before November the 1st, you can count that towards the knit along. And yeah, I think that's about it. I do have a couple of prizes already for this knit along and I didn't bring them over here. So one second. So the first prize is a prize that was donated um, and it is a skein of yarn from Yoshi and Lucy Knits who is Denise and you may know her as the Yarn Geek. She hosts the Yarn Geek podcast um, which she recently renamed the Yoshi and Lucy Knits podcast to kind of go along with her Etsy shop name because she recently started dyeing yarn. Um, yeah, her shop name is Yoshi and Lucy, which I can appreciate because I ha myself have a Yoshi. Um, and she donated this lovely skein of yarn. This is her sunset colorway on her Brillant Rill base, um, which is a 75% Subrush Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina blend. And it is just... Sorry for the crinkling. Um... Actually, why am I saying sorry? I said a long time ago that I would never apologize for crinkling, but... I'm Canadian, what can I say? Anyway, um, so it's this lovely, lovely colorway. Um, purples and reds and totally fits the space theme, I think. Uh, and I love her. I love her logo with the two kitties. It's so cute. So yeah, um, definitely check out Denise's podcast, the Yoshi and Lucy Knits podcast. She is super nerdy, um, hence her previous name, The Yarn Geek. She's super cute. Give her a shot. Um, thank you so much, Denise, for this donation. So yes, this is a prize for the upcoming Socks and Space Cal. Uh, the next prize I have, I do not have with me, but it is another yarn donation. So I was contacted by Michael, who is apt to know knits. He recently started hand dyeing yarn as well, and he wanted to donate some yarn to the podcast as a giveaway. And I said, would you be interested in um, donating as a knit along prize? And he said, sure. So I believe it is going to be for a skein of yarn from his shop um, in whatever colorways he has there, which are all based on birds, which again, I can appreciate because I myself have a doofus of a bird over there <laughs> well thank you so much for that donation michael um and make sure you check out his shop his shop is the app to know knit shop on etsy and all of those links will be in the show notes um which i didn't mention at the beginning of the episode but all show notes for this podcast can be found in the ravelry group you can just search pin feathers and pearls and it'll bring you right to it i'm sure you know that but just yeah i didn't say it at the beginning so saying it now 
All right, so that is all the sort of administrative stuff out of the way, and we can get on to some actual knitting business. Um, so yeah, uh, when I was planning on recording on Saturday, I had no FOs, but then yesterday night, I just kind of got some knitting mojo, and I finished two things, so I have two FOs to show you. Which one will I show you first? I'll show you these first. So the first FO, you, I've never shown this as a, uh, as a whip because I cast them on early in October and they are a pair of fingerless mitts for Aaron. So Aaron, Aaron is the most knit worthy person in my life. He is my, he is my favorite human. He is my other half. He is my best friend. I love him so much. And so, um... He asked for a pair of fingerless mitts because the ones that he has, which I did not make, they are store-bought, but they had a huge hole in them and they were just looking ratty. And honestly, he really needed a new pair of fingerless mitts. So I was like, of course I will knit you a pair of fingerless mitts. So I knit him a pair of these. These are the Rook. I'll show them like this so you can see both thumbs. Um, these are the Rook mittens. Mitt can I talk? Apparently not. These are the Rook Mittens and it is a pattern by Tannis Lavely, who is the dyer behind, dyer and owner of Tannis Fiber Arts. A lovely Canadian yarn company and indie dyer. So it's just a really simple basket weave textured pattern. Um, yeah, uh, this pattern was super well written, easy to follow, and the results speak for themselves. I think they look really sharp. And the yarn that I used, there's a staple here, I'll just leave it in there. So the yarn that I used is Dream and Color Smooshy in the Good Luck Jade colorway. The funny story about this yarn is that <laughs> This yarn is legit some of my oldest stash. So I think that this yarn, I ordered it um, along with another skein of yarn, which became one of my first pair of socks. Um, I don't remember what it was now, but I ordered this skein and then that skein from the Loopy U back in like 2007. Um, it was like my ver one of my very first online yarn purchases and like this yarn has just been sitting in my stash ever since and I never used it so I was really happy when I pulled out all the yarn that I thought that he would like and he said he wanted this one. So I was super happy to use it and I have a lot left over which I'm not sure what I'm going to do with but yeah I basically just follow the pattern. The pattern says it's written for women's size medium but they're very unisex. Um, and he wanted them to be closer fitting to keep in the warmth, and they fit him perfectly. I'll just show it to you on me. <laughs> so yeah, that's how they look. I guess I'll put the other one on too. So actually wearing them kind of makes me want to pair for myself, so I might have to do that at some point. Or at least another pair of fingerless mitts. Because fingerless mitts are pretty awesome. But yeah, these are them. <laughs> but yeah, so I knit him these. And uh, now that I've shown them on the podcast, he will be super happy to get them. And be able to wear them. So yeah, I, I'm really happy with how these turned out. And they have been washed. And as you can tell, I didn't really block them. But I love to wash all my finished objects, even if I don't pin them out to block them or anything, I just think it freshens them up and makes them look nice and smooth and smell delicious. Delicious. They smell really nice. So yeah, that is my first FO. All right, and then FO number two is, I finished my Halloween socks, guys. Just in time for Halloween. So these are my Halloween socks. Uh, they are the No Pearl Monkey Sock Pattern. So it's basically the Monkey Socks Pattern by Cookie A, but instead of 
purling. There's some purl stitches in the chart. Instead of purling them, you just knit them. Uh, and I really love how they turned out. I knit these out of La Lara's yarn, so the fawn, the fawn knits and the fawn the fox. I'm sure you knew that by now, but... Uh, so I knit this out of uh, Lara's Spooky Time colorway, which is one of her Halloween colorways. So I don't think she's dying this anymore for this year. So, um, but I'm sure she'll do it again next year. I really love how these turned out. I like how this one is kind of lighter in color than this one. There's like more black on this one for sure. But anyway, uh, like I said, this is on her Spooky Time colorway in her Magpie base. Uh, instead of doing a one by one, I think the pattern is a one by one twisted rib at the top, but I just did a two by two rib because that's just what I felt like doing, so I did it. And what else can I tell you? I did six repeats for the leg, and then I think I did six repeats for the foot. So... That's about all I can tell you about these. But yeah, my Halloween socks are done. These will go in my box of socks. I would say that I would wear them on Halloween, but I have not knit a... Or, I have not knit. I have not knit a single sock I've knit this year. Yeah, that makes sense. I have not worn a single pair of socks that I have knit this year. They have all gone straight into my box of socks after I finished them and I'm going to start wearing them in 2017 so I'm getting really anxious and excited to start wearing some of these socks but it'll be so nice to have like I think this is my 13th pair so lucky number 13 is my Halloween socks um but yeah so I'll I'll be able to wear them next Halloween hey I'm so glad that I was able to show some FOs because my, I actually have some show notes and I typed up many hoes. I actually had three three half objects at the time. And I was going to make a joke about, you know, ho, ho, ho. But now I can't make that joke. And I am just kind of lamely telling you about that after the fact. Yeah. Okay, but I do have one ho. Um, so I'm, now I'm going into my works in progress. Uh, so I do have one hoe, and that is my Hermione's Everyday Sock. This is also knit out of Lara's yarn. It is her fawn base in the Spumoni colorway. So this is, this is a hoe. It's the Hermione's Everyday Sock pattern. I did a fish lips kiss heel instead of um, the heel flap and gusset, just because I felt like it. And... These are honestly the socks that just will not get done. Um, they have been on my needles forever. I keep on showing them to you in different states of completion. Like I'm not even halfway done the leg of the second sock. But I'm in this mood right now to kind of clear off all my needles. Or not all, but most of my, my whips and kind of have like a fresh start. So, I'm doing pretty good so far. Um, aside from this whip and my Pure Joy and my next whip that I'm... Well, you'll see once I start talking about it. That's all the whips I have and then I can just start some new cast-ons. But I'm not going to cast on anything until I at least finish the sock because this is ridiculous. I keep on showing this sock. I've showed it in like the past four episodes and they're not done yet. So yeah. It's the Hermione's Everyday Sock. Uh, what else can I say? Um, I can't really say anything else. But focus on the cute Snorlax instead. Because he's really cute. Okay, so I just mentioned that I have the Pure Joy on the needles. But I have legit not done anything on that. So I'm not going to show it to you because that's just embarrassing. But I do have a slight tale of woe, and that tale of woe is my boxy sweater. Which I have been working on, but I think I'm going to frog it. Uh, so before I get into that, this is the boxy sweater. It is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. 
It's a beautiful, oversized, fingering weight sweater. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's something that if I ever finish it, I would wear it to death, I think. Um, but I think I'm going to frog this one. And the reason being is because I've been working on it on and off. Because Katrina of the Yarn 30 podcast is hosting a graveyard cowl. And so I picked this back up because I cast it on in the beginning of the summer. Didn't really work on it. And then I used the graveyard cowl as an excuse to pick it up again. And I really was working on it. I finished one ball of yarn and I joined the second ball. And then I discovered this morning that even though all my yarns are from the same dye lot, you can totally see where I joined the second color. It's not as obvious on camera right now, but I put a picture on my Instagram stories and you can totally see like now I now I feel like an idiot because you can't really tell here. But I don't know. I kind of just want to frog it and forget about it because Trying to see if you can see it in certain ways, but you can kind of tell, but not really. Trust me, guys, you can tell that it is like a slightly different shade, even though they're all the same dye lot. I made sure that they were all the same dye lot, and yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm looking at it in front of me, and Duh, I don't know what to do. Yeah, so this sweater, you can, you can kind of see it. I see it. I don't know if you guys do or if you guys think I'm probably just crazy. But, I don't know. I think that I am just going to put this on a timeout for now. I don't know if I want to keep working on it. Which sucks because this yarn is so soft and lovely. I do want to use it for something. I mean, I have five skeins of this stuff, but I don't know. I guess I could start alternating the yarn, but I don't really, I don't really want to. So we'll see what happens. This is the Boxy Sweater by Hohi Locatelli. It is on a timeout. Uh, we are not talking at the moment, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it might be heading to the Frog Pond. Um, but until then, I'm just going to leave it in this bag and not worry about it right now because, like, I barely have that much knitting mojo right now as it is. So I don't want to spend time worrying about this right now. So, yes. That's all I'll say about that. So another thing that I have been working on is I have been doing a little bit of dyeing. There was a Saturday, I think it was the Saturday of the Thanksgiving long weekend where I was a bit stressed out. I'm not going to get into it, but I decided to dye some yarn. So I have a bunch of um, 50 gram skeins that I wound off from a cone that I got. And it's not even merino, it's just a non-super wash. Um, basic wool fingering weight basic wool and so I decided to play around I, I made them 50 skeins or 50 gram skeins so that I could just play around with them so I I died up three of them <laughs> um, so I didn't really have I was just playing around in the dye pot I wasn't really I didn't really have a plan with any of it except for this one I knew that I wanted to do um, a mint color so for this one I I mixed up the the dyes that I wanted to use and I put them in the pot with the water and the citric acid first uh, and then I and then I added the yarn so and then I I love how this turned out actually I think this one turned out really nice so there's this one and then this one, this one I just knew I wanted to be pinky, browny, sort of ice creamy sort of colors. Like, 
So I actually, I love how this turned out. It's been a while, like they've been on my shelf and I haven't really taken a close look at them since I've dyed them. So looking at them again, um, I'm actually quite proud of myself. <laughs> so I really like how this one turned out. And actually, I think I have a plan for this one. Um, and this one, I think I'm going to use them together to knit another uh, vintage prim hat, which is what I'm wearing right now. Um, just because I think they'll look pretty sharp together. What do you think? And then I also dyed this one. And this one I really, I was just, no plan. I just kind of went hog wild in the dye pot. And I came up with this blue beauty um which my friend mandy has called dibs on so i will be gifting this to her because she wants it um and yeah i love i love how this one turned out i love this dark navy section here and there's some areas with black speckles um but yeah, I know that non-superwash yarns don't take your uh, color quite as vibrantly as superwash does. But I mean, I think I did pretty good because this is really vibrant. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to play around in the dye pot again. It's something that I just have to set aside time to actually not sit down. I, don't, I can't sit down in the kitchen, but to actually just do it. Uh... But yeah, I, I will be dying some more because it's super fun. So now on to acquisitions. And trust me, everyone, there's a lot of them. Uh, put it all in this bucket. Yeah. So, um... Let's get started. <laughs> so before I get on to the Yarny acquisitions, um, I got a really lovely package from uh, Jody and Tracy of the Grocery Girls. And uh, I got a message from Tracy after my episode where I talked about pins. And she said, asked me if I wanted a Grocery Girls pin. And I was like, sure, send it on over. So I gave her my address and then... I didn't get anything for a long time and then finally I think last week I got I finally got the package and it was so funny it was so cute Tracy had put my address and then instead of putting Calgary she had put Edmonton on it and it looked like the post office was like try Calgary they wrote it on the envelope so gave me a chuckle I sent Tracy a picture I thought it was adorable Tracy so don't even worry about it but they sent me just a pin, one of their Grocery Girls pins, which I'm going to stick on one of my bags. And they also sent me a bunch of buttons and some cute pairs of scissors, which was super sweet. So thank you, Tracy and Jody. I really appreciate that. Um, even if you think that I live in Edmonton. Yeah, we don't live in Edmonton. <laughs> so the first acquisition that I want to show you is some lovely yarn that I ordered from um, lovely MJ who is Cat Sandwich Fibers. She recently had a shop update. I say recently, I think it was, it was a couple weeks ago now, but either way, it got to me super fast. Yes, so MJ of Cat Sandwich Fibers had a huge update with hundreds and hundreds of, hundreds and hundreds, I'm really overblowing overstating that anyway it was a lot of yarn so she had a huge update and so I snagged a couple of skeins from MJ so there's her label cat sandwich fibers I love her logo it's so cute so I got two skeins uh, so this one is do you not like this because then you have really bad taste if you don't. Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, where was I? Um, so this one is the one that I saw on her Instagram post and I knew I wanted this one. It is... What's the colorway? 
It is Autumn Sky in her trusty base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. Uh, the yarn basically speaks for itself. It is amazeballs. And then I also grabbed this skein. Seriously, it was such a hard decision. At one point, I think I had like five skeins in my cart and I was like, Candice, you're a crazy person. You can't order that much yarn. So I had to narrow it down. So I narrowed it down to this one. And then I ordered this one, which is the Peppermint Toads colorway. And it is on her Mighty Base, which is a 7525 Superwash BFL and nylon. So these will make some super cute socks. Um, yeah. If you ever get a chance to snag some of MJ's yarn, I highly recommend it. I have some others in my stash that I'm still coveting. Uh, she dyes such amazing colorways, so yeah. Thank you so much, MJ. So next acquisition. So, one of my local yarn stores, which is Stash, just this month, they started carrying hedgehog which is a big deal because there's nowhere else in Calgary that carries hedgehog fibers. So that's amazing. So of course I was going to go to Stash and I was going to uh, the rogue strand of bang here. Okay. So of course I was going to go to Stash and I was going to grab some. And there was one colorway in particular that I knew I wanted and that was this one. Which is the fly colorway. I've seen this colorway online a lot and I really liked it but I've never been able to really catch it in an update or anything like that so knew I wanted this one so I grabbed this one but then when I was there I saw that they had fool's gold so I grabbed a skein of fool's gold as well and it was so nice to see like all these hedgehog fibers colorways like actually in person. Honestly, I could have gotten one of each skein, but uh, yeah, I really like these and don't know what I'm going to use them for, but it's hedgehog and I treated myself. I called it a birthday present as I then called everything else that is in this tub. So the rest of my acquisitions, except for one thing that's not yarn, is from the Fiber Shindig. Uh, no wait, I lied. Um, uh, <laughs> so one more thing and then it's all Fiber Shindig, or stuff that I got at the Fiber Shindig. So I got a message from Taylor, who, um, she is the dyer behind Cat Sock Fibers on Etsy, which is a new Etsy shop, I believe she either just launched or she's launching soon i might not have my facts straight but she wanted to send me a skein of yarn and i said sure because i love trying out new yarns and supporting other indie dyers and promoting them so she sent me a skein of yarn i didn't know what colorway she was going to send me but when i opened this package i was like i didn't know i needed this shade of pink in my life but clearly i did because i fell in love with it so this is cat sock fibers is her sc.com slash cat sock fibers llc um links will be in the show notes and like this is this is a really bright hot pink um it actually reminds me of tracy of the grocery girls so i have a feeling that she would like this you would like this wouldn't you tracy <laughs> um so this is the burglar colorway i think that's burglar and her wash fingering base which is an 80 20 super wash merino nylon super soft squishy the colors are vibrant love this and she also sent me two mini skeins which she wrote down the colorway names in the lovely card she sent me but i don't know where that card went but she sent me these really lovely mini skeins as well I believe that they're actually named after, look at that. So I believe they're actually named after um, Lord of the Rings references, if I'm not mistaken, but 
These are awesome. I can't wait to put these in my blanket, which no, I have not worked on, but. So once again, that's Cat Sock Fibers. Um, the dyer is Taylor. Thank you so much, Taylor. Uh, and yeah, check her out because she dyes some pretty amazing stuff. Um, yes. So, now I have fiber shindig stuff to show you. The first, actually, I got at fiber shindig, but I actually didn't buy at fiber shindig because it was a birthday gift. So... Lara, who is the Fawn Knits, and she owns the Fawn and the Fox Etsy shop. Uh, she had a booth at the Fiber Shindig. And a couple days before, um, she kind of did an Instagram story where she showed all the yarn she was bringing. And my eyes zeroed in on one particular thing. And I was like, I want that. Put that aside for me. And she gave it to me as my birthday gift. So... This is a gradient from Lara. I've never had a gradient skein like this before, so I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for, but I mean, you can clearly tell why I wanted it because it's, it's mint. Um, it's mint and those sea foamy greens that I love so much. I'm not sure what I want to use this for. So if you guys have any suggestions for what I could use this gradient for, that would be appreciated. It's fingering weight, of course. I think it's like 420 yards of fingering weight. I don't have the label here, but... Thank you so much, Laura. This was really great to get as a gift. She gave me some stitch markers too, which I don't have here. But they were Harry Potter themed, which is awesome. I vowed to myself that I wasn't going to buy anything else besides this, which she ended up gifting to me, at Laura's booth. But then I ended up buying a skein as well. So <laughs> I bought a skein of her magpie base in the gypsy colorway. And holy moly, guys. Look at that. It is gorgeous. So <laughs> I said it to her when I was there. I was like, people are going to think that like my podcast is just constant... The Fawn and the Fox promotion because I'm I one of my FOs is in her yarn, one of my whips is in her yarn. I bought this, like that's what happens when you're friends with a yarn dyer who dyes really beautiful stuff. So aside from that, I actually bought that skein of uh, the Fawn and the Fox because I thought it would go really well with this other skein that I picked up at the Shindig. So this is from Poppy Yarn and Fiber. It was an indie dyer based in uh, Calgary. This is the Stardust colorway and it is on a Stellina base, just like this is. And I don't know, I was super drawn to this colorway. I just, there's something about it that I really loved. So I had to have it. And then I put it next to this and I thought that they looked really well together. So I think, I think I'm going to use these together in something. Um, not sure what yet though. Maybe something brioche? I don't know. But look at them. They look, they look good. So yeah. This is the Stardust colorway in the Oro sock base, which is a Stelina uh, yarn. So I got this from the Poppy Yarn and Fiber booth, but I also got another skein from the Poppy Yarn and Fiber booth. And that was this, which is, this is actually self-striping. So that's really exciting. I love these colors. And this is the Lestrange colorway. So it's based on Bellatrix Lestrange. So it's in the Bow Sock base, which is an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon. Self-striping yarn. Uh, and I love it. It actually kind of reminds me of, it's kind of like the same tones and colors of the McGonagall colorway that Nomadic Yarns has. Like really similar, um, but not the same, like just, just similar tones. So I love this. 
So I mentioned earlier that I got to talk with Jess, who owns Haven Fiber Arts, um, and I picked up some skeins from her. So I grabbed this skein, and this is her Goblin Queen colorway. So I think this was her, was her Halloween colorway this year, so um, I love this colorway. So it's Goblin Queen, and it is on her 7520 Super Rush Merino Nylon base, her True Sock base, it's called. And I like her new labels as well. Jess, these labels are really, really pretty. So I got that from her. Um, and I also got... This is actually the colorway that I knew I wanted to get. Um, then I got sidetracked by this, and then I ended up going back for this later on. Yeah. So this is Guilty Pleasure. And this is in a two-ply sock base, 8020 Super Rush Mino Nylon. It's called the Squish Sock Base. So super speckled and fun. These will make a really fun pair of socks. I love this. And then along with these, I also picked up a mini skein. Which I think I think I'm going to use as the heels and toes for this sock whenever I get around to knitting it. So everything's getting blown out, but you can see it there. So yeah, I got this from Haven. So my next yarny acquisitions from the Fiber Shindig are both from Flock Fiber Studio. And Flock Fiber Studio is a relatively new indie dyer. Um, they're based in Calgary, I believe Calgary. And I remember seeing their booth at Old Fiber Week, but I didn't buy anything at that point. But I knew I really wanted to check them out when I saw that they were going to be at the Shindig. So I picked up these two skeins. And this is one that I kept looking at during Old Fiber Week, but I didn't buy it, um, so I knew I wanted it. And I got this one in the Superwash BFL Nylon Base 8020, and it is the Sunset Soon Forgotten colorway. Just beautiful. And then I also picked up a skein of their Take a Hike sock base. It is 8020 Super Rush Merino Nylon. And um, this is the Autumn Birches colorway. This is so pretty. So love these. And that concludes my Fiber Shindig haul, which is a lot of yarn. I'm trying to carry it all and like hold it up, but then they're all like toppling out of my arms, but yeah. So this is the thing guys, <laughs> when I went to, to the fiber shindig, I told myself, Candace, the last thing you need is any more skeins, any more single skeins of fingering weight or sock yarn. You have a lot of it. That's the last thing you need. And then what is what is what I bought? It's all fingering weight, single skeins of sock yarn. So I I definitely have too many single skeins. Well, not too many. They're all going to get knit eventually. But I definitely, I think I'm good. Like, I'm definitely good for sock yarn at this point. So I'm putting myself on a yarn freeze in terms of fingering weights, single skeins of sock yarn because why am I still holding these like this? But yeah, I'm definitely putting myself on a bit of a freeze at least until early next year because I really don't need any more. Um, that being said, I did make an order at Nomadic Yarns for just one, one colorway um, and that should come to me like probably end of November-ish, but, like, but then after that, like, I, I really, I don't need any more single skeins of sock yarn. So, that, that was all my yarny, that was my yarny bender. Um, I do have one more acquisition, and this was a birthday gift. It's a birthday gift from Aaron's dad and Aaron. They bought this for me together. 
Uh, it's something that I've been eyeing for a while from Stash, and it is this. Um, and if you're not sure what this is, this is the Chiagu Mini um, Interchangeable Set. So it is a sock knitting needle interchangeable set. And I've wanted this ever since um, I saw a knitter, I met a knitter uh, during a flash day at Mission Tattoo Parlor and I saw that she was using a set of these. So it's the Chiagu Twist Minis Interchangeable Set. So it comes with five, five sets of five inch needles. And they range from triple zero to size 1.5. Like triple zero is super tiny. Like look at this. That's like so small. Um... But the selling point on these was the cable. These cables are very flexible. Like if you're familiar with the Chiagu, I'm just looking over at mine over there. If you're familiar with the normal Chiagu uh, red lace circulars, you'll know that that cable is kind of um, stiff, but these cables are like otherworldly. They are so, like they are so flexible. Um, like, if you can get an idea from my wiggly arm <laughs> movements, they are so flexible. So I'm super excited to use these. This is what I'm going to be using to knit my next pair of socks, which will probably be my uh, Socks in Space Cal socks, which I was going to talk about what I was planning, but I'll talk about that next time. So yeah, I'm really excited to use these. And I know that... Haya Haya, which is my preferred needle brand. I know that Haya Haya also does a sock interchangeable set. Um, but I really, I wanted the Chiagu's just because of the cable. And also the fact that the needle sizes go to such a tiny size. Now, I don't know when I'm going to use the double or the triple zeros, but you never know. Um, maybe I want a denser gauge sock or something. But yeah, I'm really excited to use these. And they come in this very cute little case. This little plastic case with all the various doodads that you need for the for the interchangeables. Like the little tightening keys and cable connectors and stuff. So, And it comes with the needle gauge ruler as well. So yeah, I, I love this. Um, I'm so excited to use it. And... Yeah, sock knitting interchangeables are apparently um, a thing. Uh, I'm really excited to use these. So I will, I will let you know what I think of them once I start using them. All right, so I have a question in my Ask Me Anything thread that I um, am going to answer now. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull it up. So the question is from Karina, who's Nitty Pie. Hi, Karina. Um, she says, Hi, Candice. With Christmas approaching, I'm trying to figure out my knitting queue for gifts. I was wondering if you can recommend two or three projects that you've made in the past few years that wouldn't take up too much time and that you think would make great gifts. Uh, feel free to answer here or in an upcoming podcast. Thanks, Karina. So that is a really good question. I'm a really bad knitter and I don't knit a lot of gifts, but... I have knit um, gifts in the past, and I think there are two go-tos for Christmas gifts that I think are quick, that are quick, and people are going to use them, and I feel like uh, they just make really good Christmas gifts, and that's mittens, and that is hats. You can't go wrong with either of those things, and um, those things are also usually knit in worsted weight, or sometimes even heavier, like bulky weight yarn which is even better because that makes it quicker. But I think mittens make a really great gift. They're super cute. You know that someone's going to use them at some point. Mittens generally don't have to fit a person's certain style, much like hats sometimes do. Yeah, I don't know. I think mittens are like the best gift. <laughs> so I'm planning on possibly knitting some 
Um, uh, I'm not going to say for who, but yeah, I'm planning on maybe knitting some mittens myself this year for Christmas gifts, but we'll see if that actually happens because I'm really bad when it comes to knitting for gifts. But I think hats and mittens um, are generally good Christmas gifts items to knit. I don't have any specific patterns that come to mind right away. I'm sorry. Yeah, those would definitely be the things that I would suggest because in the past when I have gifted things, for the holidays they've either been hats or mittens and I don't think you can go wrong with either of those things and they don't take too long either like scarves take a long time cowls I find a lot of non knitters are confused by cowls shawls would take too long and then you're not sure if the recipient will like them so yeah that's my answer hats or mittens all right guys so that's about it for me I We'll wrap it up with a recommendation, I suppose. Um, the only thing that I can recommend right now is, you guys, if you're not watching the TV show Westworld, you must watch Westworld. I know that a couple of other people have talked about Westworld on their podcasts. Um, the ones who've come to mind are Katie of Inside Number 23. She talks about Westworld either in her Vlogtober videos or in her podcast I'm not sure but I know Katie is watching Westworld so hi Katie I hope you're having fun in Orlando um <laughs> so Katie is watching it and I also know Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi is also watching it um and those two have amazing taste so if you don't trust my opinion at least trust theirs <laughs> um but yeah Westworld is so good you guys um Aaron and I watched the first episode and immediately after we watched the first episode, we were just like, we just want to watch more of it. It's so, it's so good. It grips you right from the beginning. And it's only four episodes in and it's brand new. So if you like weird sci-fi-ish dystopian mind trippy sort of stories, then definitely watch it. Uh... If I could compare it to a film or some other piece of media, it would probably be the film Ex Machina. Which I'm not sure how many people have seen that, but if you haven't watched Ex Machina as well, watch Ex Machina, because that is a good movie. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ex Machina is also good. But as I was saying, Westworld is super good. So if you're into dystopian, futuristic, um, sci-fi and it's also a western, give it a shot. I don't want to give too much away because that's one of the great things about this show is that it's just so fresh and new um, in terms of like the things that you see on television. It's not just, you know, it's good. That's all I'll say. So just watch Westworld. Trust me, it is good. <laughs> um, better than Luke Cage, which I recommended it on a past episode because I was super enjoying it at the time because I was halfway through watching it. And Luke Cage is really good, but it really fell flat at the end for me. Um, I don't want to give too much away there too, but I was really disappointed by the last villain. It was just kind of like, I can't take you seriously. <laughs> but he's still a beautiful man. Um, yeah, now I'm just going off on tangents. So, I'm going to end this episode now. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this at the beginning, but if you want to follow me on Instagram and uh, friend me on Ravelry, my username on both those is transitory. Come join the Ravelry group and join our Socks in Space Cal, which is going to be starting in about a week here. That is going to be super fun. Um, I can't wait to see everyone's spacey socks. Uh, thank you for joining me and thank you for waiting um, these past few weeks for an episode. I just, I felt like I was disappointing people by not recording on Saturday like I planned to, which is silly of me. I shouldn't put that sort of expectation on myself because it's just a podcast. I'm just doing this for fun. And, uh, but yeah, thank you again to everyone for your lovely comments. Um, I really appreciate each and every one of you i think that the knitting community is so amazing um and yeah 
I just have a lot of love. <laughs> I have a lot of love for the community and everyone. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Yoshi is stuffing his face over there. Uh, yeah, and I will see you in a week or two. Bye!